Hello, hello, hello. Yes. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, social media world. And hello, Facebook. I know it has been a long time since I have been live. I'm really just coming on here for a short moment it's just to say hello just because i missed everyone and i want to just check in with you all but god really has given me a short quick word that i wanted to um release and for us to kind of chew on it and um and as he gave me to begin to come back out i'll expound on it some more but i really wanted to um, share a quick word that God gave me, but I do want to say thank you to everyone who has been praying for me or you prayed for me um, when I was sick and I am still healing, but I thank God for um, bringing me to this point of healing and what he's still doing in my body. Uh, for those of you who do not know, I did have a stroke um, which caused a bleed in my head. I thank God for the doctor's report that that um, bleeding in my head has stopped and now I am in recovery mode. And so I thank God for keeping me and sparing my life. I thank God for his goodness, his grace, and his mercy because if he did not heal me, then no one else could. And so I am grateful and um, humbled that he stopped to touch my body and allow me to be here, to still be here. And so, um, honestly, it, uh, I honestly was like, okay, God, you know, I don't really want to continue on um, because I'm like, you know, this was something scary that happened to me. But by the grace of God, he allowed me to still live. And so there is still a work for me to do in the kingdom. And so I just wanted to hop on and share um, share this quick word with you. He's given me so, many, so much revelation as I've been going through my healing process. I have been home, but he's given me so much revelation. But tonight, um, I do want to just share um, what he's given me when it comes to um, disobedience. One thing I can say um, that he's revealed to me about disobedience as I um, have been healing is that there were some signs that I could have um, dealt with prior to me getting sick and being stressed out and then having a stroke if I would have obeyed and adhered to what he um was doing in me and beginning in me if I would have kept on a regimen of being in good health, um, I believe I probably would not have ended this way. But nevertheless, I still praise and thank God that he allowed me to spare my life. But now there is a place of obedience that I have to walk in so that I may continue to heal and I may um, be um, honored, honorable in his eyes um, and that I may be the vessel he wants me to be and he desires for us to be in good health. And so um, when it comes to disobedience, what God has really been sharing with me is that a lot of times we want to walk in our own way or we want to um, ask God for his promises and, and for him to bless us, but we want to still be disobedient. And that's just not his will that he, you know there are some unconditional promises that he does have for us like he promised to never leave us nor forsake us he promised that he'll always be with us he promises um like in psalms 145 and 9 i'm just gonna walk through some scriptures when it comes to uh, some of the unconditional promises i'm just gonna say a few that i found and there are definitely a lot more but I just want to share some some with you tonight. But if we look at Psalms 140 and not 145 and nine, it says the Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all He's made on all He has made. So what is that telling me? He has compassion. That's an unconditional area of promise for the for God in our lives, right? 
Let's look at Psalms 105. It says, For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. That's an unconditional promise. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. That's not something we have to worry about. God always loves us. He loved, He died for the sinner and the, and the saved. For the sinner and the saints. He didn't just die for the saints, but no, he died for the sinners that we may come to know him and, and have in salvation through him that we might be saved, right? So let's look at James 1 and 17. It says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting, shifting shadows. What we need to focus on in here is that it says that he does not change like shifting shadows. That's a promise. God will never change. His love will never change. His grace and mercy will never change. Those are unconditional promises that he has for us, right? Psalms 34 and 8, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blesses the one who takes refuge in him. Now here, here's where we're going to get into where I felt I feel like that we are uh, we need to look at when it comes to being disobedience when we're talking about the promises of God and, and, and the scripture begins to shift and it moves into an action where it's requiring an action from us. But if we don't walk in that action, how can we expect that promise to still be fulfilled by God? Right? Um Let's look at, before we get into, I'm going to show you how he began to speak to me and, and how uh, to look at disobedience and, and how we can apply the word to our lives when it comes to the action part that we need to partake in. It says he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. That's, a, that's an unconditional promise. He gives strength to the weary. Tired, he, he will increase the power of the weak. Right? But we must take refuge in him. So now, here's where I want to get into what I really want to talk about, which is the unconditional, the disobedience part where we have to begin to dissect the word and find out where we may be disobedient, disobedient in and change that action. If we look at Proverbs chapter 3, 5 and 6, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Well, we can stop right there. Where can, where can we become disobedient? It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. A lot of times, we don't want to trust in the Lord. We want to trust in man. We want to trust in our job. We want to trust in um, people, places, and things. When the requirement says, the proverb says to trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. So if I'm leaning to my own understanding, if I'm trusting in my own way, but not trusting in the Lord, that is disobedience. The verse 6 says, in all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. So if I'm supposed to submit all my ways to him, and he will make my path straight, then it's disobedient when I do not submit to God. If I'm submitting to any and everything else and not submitting to God first, then that's disobedience. I just, I'm just, I'm just walking the scriptures. Listen, it hit me first, okay? Now, Hebrews 11 and 6. And then I'm going to go into this uh, another time because I literally just wanted to come on and just share with you. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. This is Hebrews 11 and 6. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. There's a lot of action in here. First is, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. So if, we're, if we walk in worry, if we walk in defeat, if we walk in our own mindset and not in faith, then we're totally disobedient. We're totally being disobedient. If we're not walking in what God has told us to walk in, which is faith, then we are being disobedient and we're not pleasing God. It says it's impossible to please him. If that's the case, then how can we expect the promises that we so desire to be fulfilled to us if we won't walk in obedience. 
It says, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is. In my, are we expecting promises for God, for, from God and we don't even believe who he is? Are we just asking him for things and we don't even believe that he can, that he can fulfill them? But my process to healing, and I'm in, he's, like I said, he's still doing the work within me. If I don't believe that he can heal me, work through the medicine, work through my obedience to changing my lifestyle, changing what I do, changing how I think, all these things is a requirement. Healing is already ours. But if we don't believe it, then it's not going to happen. It says, God, it says, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I probably just could have said this one scripture right here and broke this thing down. In order to be rewarded of them, he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That's when it goes in. That's when it goes in those promises because there are some promises that are unconditional. They're already ours. Just by him dying on the cross for us. There are some promises that are already ours. But he is a rewarder order of them that diligently seeks him. That's when we're going to move into those desires that we want, those promises that we desire of him. That's when we're going to see those promises fulfilled. When we begin to take on the obedience of Christ. What is the obedience of Christ? It's following his word. Is being obedient to his word. Let's look at what it, what are some scriptures when it says to be disobedient. And we look at John chapter 14 and 15. It says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Do we say we love God, but don't keep his commandments? Romans 6 and 23, for the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Are we walking in sin? If we're walking in sin, then that's disobedience. God wants us to have a fulfilled life. He wants to have He wants us to have a, pro, a prosperous life. He wants us to be in good health. He wants us to have a future of hope. He wants us to give, give us an expected end. But it's our obedience. Luke 6 and 46, it says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I tell you? Listen, when I tell you, um, I've been the, I was in the house for 65 days. I'm counting the days. Little week, my daughter says, Ma, you counting the days? I am counting the days. Um, but God's been dealing with me because there are some promises that he, I know he's, he wants to give me, but I, I have to be able to walk in obedience. So, you know, we're, we're no, he's no, um, he's no God that just picks and chooses who he wants to bless. He is a rewarder of all that diligently seek him. One of the other things that I wanted to share, and the last thing I'll leave with you all, because I literally have to get off here because I have something to do. But 2 Chronicles 7.14 is my foundational scripture. I usually do Mother's Cry Prayer on Monday nights, but I really needed to release this word that God gave me. It says, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Some of us are just a step away when it comes to obedience, to having our whole entire land healed, our generations healed, our bloodline healed. But are we so stuck in wanting to do things our way that we're not willing to sacrifice to give up and turn from our own desires, our own mindsets, and live an obedient life so that Christ may be fulfilled in us, through us, in the earth. 
It's a question I'm going to leave you with. So that's it. I just wanted to come on and share and share with you all. Um, those of you who know me, who've been vibing with me, um, you know I love to help people in whatever revelation God gives me. If he wants me to release that, then I will release it. The last thing um, I do want to share is that um, I had in the last three weeks, so God deals with me a lot sometimes in dreams, not even a lot. Every now and then I'll dream vividly. And the last three weeks I've had three separate dreams. And so they are dreams of warning, but I want to share them. I've prayed through, they're not for me. Um, and I've done ask the questions that I needed to ask to make sure they aren't for me. But I want to just put an awareness out here. If you're watching this, uh, please share, please pray, please look in your own house first. But they, I had three dreams of warning. The first dream I had three weeks ago, I would just say that if you're in abusive relationships, Please seek help and get out of those relationships. If you're in an abusive relationship, God is sending a warning to come out of those relationships. Seek help. 211, if you got to call 211, that is um, that gives you access to your city, uh, social workers, uh, uh, operator who can connect you with services. The second dream I had was for if you're getting ready to go into business and sign a contract, this is a, a, a dream of warning. If that contract doesn't feel right, if that contract don't sound right, don't sign it. That's not for you. Pray and ask God to bless you some other way. So that is for those who are in business, you get ready to sign a contract, that contract is not right, it's not lining up, the Holy Spirit is saying no, don't sign it. The third dream I had is concerning children, uh, specifically female children. Um, I had a dream that um, a young girl was violated and um, it actually was really profound. It was uh, said to be a teacher so check in with your kids check in with your female children especially because of this dream i had make sure we're checking in on, on our children asking questions teaching them um how to protect themselves about how their uh, body parts are not for anyone to be touching on but those are the three dreams i had and their dreams of warning and so um, I want to leave that with y'all again. Thank you for those who've been praying for me, the, the, those who have been checking on me. I appreciate you. And I'm going to pray because I need to hop off in here. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you now, God. I thank you for your goodness and your mercy. God, I thank you, God, that even in this quick word tonight, Father God, that you were able to plant a seed tonight to remind us the importance of being obedient, obedient to you, Father, and not disobedient, Father. God, that your perfect will, God, may be um, may happen through us, Father God, that you would give us, oh God, the desires of our heart according to your will, according to your loving kindness, oh God, just by us walking in the way, walking in the truth, walking in the light, Father God. We thank you, oh God, that you are the director of our paths. We thank you, Father God, that we can call on you in the name of Jesus. God, that there is no good thing that you will hold withhold from us, Father. God, that you are a rewarder of those who diligently seek you, Father. I pray now in the name of Jesus, God, God, that you will continue to have your way in the name of Jesus. I pray, oh God, that those who may listen to this live, God, they will share this live, Father, with someone who needs it, someone who may be weary, someone who may, who may need 
God, to understand, God, that they would just find their way to you, find their way to be obedient to your word, Father God, that you will raise, oh God, up your love and kindness even the more, but you will raise them up, God, to understand through your word, God, that that is where they can find strength, that is where they can find stability, that is where they can find an everlasting covenant, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that you, oh God, know the plans that you have for us, Father, plans not of evil, plans to give us hope, plans to give us a future and expect it in, Father God, I thank you now, Father, God, for your healing power, I thank you, Father, for being a mighty deliverer, I thank you for being everything that we need, Father. I pray now in the name of Jesus, God, that you would just send love out across the nation. God, send love out and let your love bounce off the walls of your people. I pray for healing tonight. I pray for freedom tonight. I proclaim freedom tonight, God, because it's already ours, Father. I pray for salvation. I pray for a quick mind, Father God, that for us to continue to walk in your will walk in your way, God, that we may walk circumspectly and subject to your word, Father, that you may get the glory out of us because you created us, God. You desire for us to have the glory, to that your glory may be seen through us, Father. So I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that, that this world, God, that those who are watching this, Father, that we may adhere to your word and continue to walk in a way that's pleasing to you. It's in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, I pray it is so and so it is in Jesus' name. I love y'all. Thank y'all. Be blessed. I'll be back soon. I don't know how soon, but when God is ready for me, I'll be back. All right. Love y'all.